Hello and welcome to the Security and Counter-Terror Expo webinar series. Today we are joined by Talal Rajab, Head of Program, Cyber and National Security at Tech UK. Talal manages strategic relationships between government and industry members on cyber and national security related issues, in particular through the Cyber Growth Partnership. He also leads Tech UK's work on the Investigatory Powers Act and has led on a number of cyber security related research projects. Talal will also be chairing the Free to Attend Cyber Threat Intelligence Conference at Security and Counter-Terror Expo. I will now hand over to Talal. Well, hi there, everybody. Uh, as Peter just said, my name is Talal Rajab. I'm the Head of Program at Tech UK, uh, managing our national uh, and cybersecurity programs. And um, what I thought I'd do today is um, run through some of the key themes that, that I and Tech UK feel um, are, are most important within the cybersecurity landscape um, in the UK for 2017, um, and, and also highlight some of the key themes that we'll be discussing at the Security and Counter-Terror Expo that is coming up next month. But let's start off with a little bit about Tech UK. What is Tech UK? So for those who don't know, um, Tech UK is the, is the trade association for the UK tech industry, representing over 950 uh, companies. And uh, like we always want, uh, we always like to say from, from chips to clicks. So from your, your Intels and your arms, um, right over to your Facebook, Googles and Microsoft, um, sort of Microsofts of the world. We are the, the trade association for those companies um, and representing the companies that essentially shape the future uh, for, for our nation. Um, I run the cybersecurity group, uh, like I mentioned earlier, which is made up of over 250 cybersecurity companies uh, providing the, the software services and products that, that keep us secure when we use online services. Tech UK as an organization acts as the main conduit for government to engage with the cybersecurity sector. So we provide the secretariat for something called the Cyber Growth Partnership, which work with, works with government to ascertain how best to grow the cybersecurity sector here in the UK. And uh, our focus for, for 2017 mainly is, uh, is going to be based around um, how to secure cybersecurity within the public sector space. So all of our, our healthcare records, when we um, sort of uh, renew our car, car tax online, um, is that data secure? How can we make sure that it is secure? Um, and that's one of our, our key focuses as an organization uh, for 2017. Cybersecurity essentially underpins the continued development of the global digital economy um, and its technologies and, and the services within the cybersecurity sector protect our personal data and our messages online. They safeguard our intellectual property within our businesses and secure our critical national infrastructure. So for myself, it's a really exciting um, and growing sector um, to be working in. About uh, Security and Counter-Terror Expo, so within that, um, there, uh, there was going to be a cyber threat intelligence zone, and this is the second year now that uh, Tech UK uh, will be working within the cyber threat intelligence zone. Um, you know, it's it's a conference that we we are really keen to support. It's the fastest growing cyber security event um, in the UK, um, and in my time working, uh, working with colleagues on this conference, um, I've seen a, a large number of senior professionals from both the public and private sector space um, coming in and learning about some of the key emerging trends within cybersecurity, um, some of the key technologies that will be emerging within the sector, uh, and some of the key threats to look out for um, when you're, 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 you're sort of moving your business and your business services online. And within the, within the conference, we'll be covering topics, topics as far ranging as, as the emerging cyber threat landscape um, and cyber crime to the cyber threat to connected cars, smart cities, and the, and the ever-growing issue of cyber insurance. So why is cybersecurity important to the UK? Um, I mean, I've been in this role for about three or four years now. We say this every year, but 2017 really is going to be a big year for the cybersecurity sector. In just the first four months of this year, we've seen major cyber breaches uh, reported reportedly hitting Wonga, Cloudflare, uh, the Association of British Travel Agents, um, in the uh, as, as part of the government's uh, five-year national cybersecurity strategy. We've seen a large investment um, by government um, in the UK cybersecurity capability capabilities to the tune of 1.9 billion, 
and, and that's been put forward to to help defend our critical national infrastructure and deter uh, cyber criminal uh, activity. Um, we've got a growing UK cyber capability within the UK, a large number of fantastic UK cybersecurity companies, which are not only uh, providing great services domestically, but also exporting uh, overseas. Um, and then we've also seen the opening of the National Cybersecurity Centre, uh, a one-stop shop for cybersecurity in the UK uh, that is essentially there to manage national cybersecurity threats, provide an authoritative voice uh, and centre of expertise on cybersecurity and develop, deliver tailored support and guidance to regulators, to businesses um, and to the public alike. Now, this is going to be a user-friendly uh, space for, for businesses and individuals. Um, and we've essentially got a, a centre that will provide a rapid response to major cyber incidents. The centre was formally launched by the Queen in February, um, and we've, all, we've all, um, already seen uh, so, so some great work that it's, that it's been doing. If you look on its website, the guidance and advice that it, that it gives to businesses and individuals um, is, is sort of world class. And I think within the UK, we're essentially trying to uh, shine a beacon, really, to the rest of the world and provide... Um, sort of world-class advice and a world-class example of how to do cybersecurity uh, within a, a nation state. Um, so working within, working with international partners, we can uh, hope to ensure that um, cyber criminals are deterred and that businesses feel safe to operate online. And then lastly, within the UK, we've opened up two new innovation centers uh, that will again seek to help grow the UK cyber capability and grow UK cybersecurity companies. The first of these innovation centres has been opened in, in Cheltenham, uh, with one uh, soon to be launched in London. So with all of that, we can see that cybersecurity is a, is a tier one topic for the UK government uh, as um, sort of domestic budgets are declining uh, within the public sector, uh, cyber has seen a massive increase and that's just testament to how important cybersecurity is uh, to the UK, the UK economy, um, and, and our digital lives. Within um, the Security and Counter-Terror Expo and our Cyber Threat Intelligence Zone, uh, we're going to be looking at some key themes, really, um, for, uh, for cybersecurity uh, in 2017. Uh, we're going to begin with, firstly, an overview of current and emerging cyber threats. Uh, so to begin with, with we'll have a, a keynote speech uh, from ENISA, who are the European uh, Network and Information Security Agency, um, and they will provide an overview of their cyber threat landscape. Now, this, this is an overview of, of various different cyber threats um, to, together with current and emerging cyber trends. Now, it's based on publicly available data, aggregated and put together um, with independent um, analysis, um, and, and it brings together over 140 um, reports from, from the security industry, from independent institutions and, and, and other analysts. And now, the, now these statistics make up uh, ANISA's cyber threat landscape and, and looking at some of the key themes that, that are within this um, report, uh, we can see that 26, 2016 was really characterized as a year when cybercrime became a, a fully uh, monetized service. So if you look at some of the criminal gangs that are operating online, Many of them are selling their wares to, to other, other organized criminal gangs. Um, we can see hackers offering their services on the dark web, uh, providing ready-made tools for gangs to, to, to exploit and to utilize online in order to steal um, customers' data and steal, um, and steal other confidential um, information. Um, security experts um, are, are consistently saying that um, such services as the ability to install malware onto PCs, uh, ransomware toolkits, um, and, and, and subscribed malware um, that can auto automate attacks um, allows uh, some of these criminals to take a cut of the proceedings um, and, and, and allows gang members and, and criminal gangs who don't have much technical expertise or, or, or sort of technical skills to to uh, to operate online and, and to steal some of our our confidential information so um whilst uh, businesses and individuals have to remain fully aware and fully up to speed on on some of the some of the technical requirements in order to keep ourselves safe online uh, many of these criminals 
don't have to have uh, many of the uh, sort of don't have to have uh, the technical technical expertise to commit some of these uh, crimes online, um, and they can buy these services uh, through the dark web. And I think that's one of the key things that will be coming out of Benice's uh, threat landscape. So cybercrime is, is a major issue for the UK. According to recent figures from the Office of National Statistics, uh, there were 3.6 million fraud cases and over 2 million computer misuse offences last year alone. So, that's, so that we can therefore see, whilst more traditional forms of crime uh, is falling, are falling, uh, cybercrime is a growing problem for, for police forces up and down the country. So what we're seeing within the UK is is traditional forms of theft and burglary uh, moving from the offline world to the online world. So uh, the Home Office is very difficult for them to continue to say that crime is falling, um, but it's not really, it's just moving onto online platforms. Now, the proliferation of technology and the digital skills among criminals, as I mentioned earlier, has enabled them to significantly amplify the speed and reach of their crimes. And this has provided a very unique challenge uh, to law enforcement agencies. And that is the reason why we're, we're really pleased to have the National Cyber Crime Unit within the National Crime Agency giving a keynote address on some of the work that they're doing to help tackle cyber crime. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of the National Crime Agency, think of them as, uh, as the UK's version of the FBI. Um, and they've got a, a very adept and highly skilled National Cyber Crime Unit within the agency that is working to help stem the tide of uh, cyber criminal activity. And the last, um, I guess, really uh, emerging uh, cyber threat is, uh, is is the lack of cyber skills within the UK. And this remains a, a key issue for, for the UK government. Uh, a recent study found that 77% of UK chief information officers feared that businesses will face more security threats over the next five years due to a lack of skilled staff. And no discussion on the threat landscape for cyber can really happen without a focus on this issue of cyber skills. Um, and the idea of how to close the cyber skills gap and develop a pathway for the next generation of cyber experts is one that is, is, uh, is at the forefront of the government's uh, agenda. And they're extremely worried about this. And that is the reason why the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, who have the remit for the digital economy uh, within government, they are currently undergoing the formulation of a specific cyber skill strategy. Uh, they'll also be uh, working with the Department for Education to include cyber teaching in school curriculums up to degree level. Now, this is something that we at Tech UK will be working with government on, um, and it's something that's affecting the tech sector at large. It, there, there aren't any sort of easy answers or easy solutions to the problem, um, but it's it's reassuring to see government addressing it, addressing this at a very uh, sort of early stage and introducing um, cyber as, uh, within the curriculum at primary school level. But um, the cyber skill shortage is going to mean that um, within the next few years, um, the cyber threat will only increase due to a lack of a lack of skilled staff. And businesses that we work with are finding it very difficult to um, to employ the, the, the correct people with the right skills um, because they're in sh such short supply. Now there are many uh, many em emerging cyber threats really that are, that are affecting businesses. Um, but what I thought I'll do within the second half of this presentation is highlight some of the key um, sort of some of the key threats that I think will be will be at the forefront of, of the media, of government, and, and businesses throughout 2017. And we we'll try to highlight many of that within um, the cyber threat intelligence um, zone at SCTX. Um, I guess the the, the first or, or the main emerging cyber threat really is the one that's affecting small businesses. Um, we've seen many attacks on on Target, on Sony, and some of the large enterprises. Um, but SMEs are increasingly becoming a target for cyber criminals uh, due to the fact that they are the, uh, less likely to have adequate cybersecurity measures in place. Many of those small businesses are unprotected and are therefore seen as an easy target for cyber criminals. Common attacks on SMEs include um, very basic data breaches where confidential uh, files are put at risk, um, the use of ransomware by fraudsters who try to extort cash from some of these businesses by blocking access to their systems, and, and, and ransomware in particular really is 
is a tough one for small businesses um, to, to get past because once some of their uh, data is blocked uh, and encrypted and they don't have access to it, uh, that can essentially bring them down as a business. If they're, if they're unable to operate for half a day, for example, that can really severely impact uh, how that business operates in the future. Um, and, and, and many of these businesses are also uh, vulnerable to hack attacks in which hackers uh, gain access to a company network in order to get hold of sensitive information, including um, and, and very worryingly including customer bank details. According to uh, Semantics Global Threat Report, nearly 43% of cyber attacks affect uh, small businesses, which is a massive uh, rise from, say, four or five years ago. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, this is extremely worrying because the effect of a cyber attack on a, on a small business is, is vastly different to the effect on a large organization. If you take what happened to Talk, Talk for example, uh, if you replicated that for an SME, uh, that would be enough to take that, that small business um, out of business uh, forever. Uh, whereas a, an organization like Talk, Talk was able to bounce back and see its share price um, go back to relatively normal uh, stage uh, within six to 12 months. So the cyber threat to small businesses is really one uh, that will continue to grow in 2017. Uh, as a large businesses begin to put adequate cyber measures in place, uh, small businesses are, re are increasingly being seen as, as easy target and low hanging fruit. Um, so we, one thing uh, we predict we'll see a lot in 2017 is a, a shift in focus from large to small businesses. Another key uh, emerging threat is the issue of um, the Internet of Things and the security of IoT uh, devices. Now, the cyber threat to the world of the Internet of Things or IoT uh, is, is a growing concern not only for, for businesses who are, who are investing in these technologies, but also for policymakers. Um, with billions of people connected to the Internet today and the number of connected devices expected to exceed over 50 billion, uh, by the year 2020, the Internet of Things represents a major transformation in a digital world that has the potential to affect everyone and every business. Uh, when you think of IoT, I guess the uh, traditional stereotypical view is of your, your fridge, which is connected to the Internet, but it can get even more important than that. Uh, from the connected car to smart homes and smart buildings, um, IoT is entering and changing our daily lives. Now, whilst this is happening, uh, however, the security risk associated with IoT uh, grow rapidly. 70% of the most commonly used IoT devices contain vulnerabilities, uh, and the security of these devices that are now connected to the internet are only as secure as the network in which they reside. So um, these devices that were consistently uh, connected to the net uh, are only secure as the people, the processes, and the technologies that are involved in the development and delivery of these devices. So we see IoT security as a critical issue. Um, and if we're to ensure that society reaps the benefits of the IoT revolution, and we can fully utilize things like the connected home, uh, smart meters and the connected car, uh, then industry will need to adopt uh, certain principles like security by default and have cybersecurity embedded into these new products from the start of their product development. Uh, and that's something that government uh, we've seen is also interested in. Um, and again, DCMS have um, initiated a secure by default project where they are looking to ensure how they can try and make um, devices and products that are coming onto the market secure by default by 2020. Now that's part of government's uh, objectives within the National Cybersecurity Strategy, where um, they stated an objective was to ensure that all connected devices by 2020 were, were secure by default. Now that just highlights uh, the concern and the worry with it within government about the security of IoT devices. Now I've mentioned government quite a bit in this presentation, and that is because there are some key policy developments that are coming up over the next uh, 12 months. Um, from not only the UK government, but also the EU, uh, which will really impact how we do cybersecurity um, and how we approach cybersecurity, um, not only within businesses, but also as individuals um, and, 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 and within the public sector. Public sector sorry. Um, now, the first key policy development area is um, 
is the introduction of the EU's General Data Protection Regulation, the GDPR. Now this, despite Brexit, will apply to UK law in May 2018, and it will massively impact how companies use and protect the data of its employees and their customers. Um, the GDPR is a wide ranging regulation um, that was initially started and, and, and created to strengthen consumer protection and enhance trust and confidence in how personal data is used and managed. It will replace existing legislation that has been in place since the mid 1990s. So the data protection, Act, the data protection act will go out of the window and the GDPR will come in place. Um, it is intended to be one of the key regulatory cornerstones for Europe's ambition to be a leading global digital economy. And the regulation will cover how personal data is gathered, stored, shared, processed and used by businesses and individuals. Now, um, the key issue with the GDPR is the threat of um, or sort of the, the, the financial penalties um, that will hit businesses for non-compliance. Um, now, it was commonly remarked that uh, had TalkTalk, Talk, for example, um, been breached um, when uh, the GDPR was in place, then the fine that they received from the Information Commissioner's Office would, would have been four or five times larger. Um, and companies can face the prospect of um, receiving a fine of up to 4% of global turnover, not just domestic, but global turnover, if they are found to have been negligent in looking after and protecting the data of their employees and customers. So the GDPR is going to be a key, um, uh, sort of a key factor within the cybersecurity sector uh, and will completely change how companies view cybersecurity. And we're seeing uh, businesses uh, today, one year before the legislation is in place, changing how they, um, changing their internal policies, internal processes to ensure that they're compliant with the legislation. Because once we see the first company, uh, the first company breach after the GDPR is in place and the fine that they receive from um, from the ICO, we will see a, a, a sort of a massive shift and a massive change in how companies view the protection of, uh, of, of, of the data of their employees and their customers. And this will also see a increase in um, in how companies view the cyber insurance market. Now, cyber insurance within the UK um, is, is relatively um, immature compared to our US counterparts, for example. Um, but with uh, such uh, legislation on the horizon, um, the liability and cost of cyber incidents will increase, and that will necessitate action amongst UK companies to manage their risk effectively. And some of them will look to, the, to cyber insurance as a means to do so. Now, there's a growing recognition that the um, that cyber insurance can offer help uh, to drive forward the adoption of minimum cybersecurity standards, as well as help mitigate risk. Um, and government and industry have come together over the past 12 months uh, in a number of joint initiatives aimed at making the UK a world center for cyber insurance. Uh, so the cyber insurance industry was fundamental, for example, in driving standards of fostering best practice in the automotive and housing industries. And it is seen that the uh, that, that, that cyber insurance uh, would do the same in driving standards of fostering best practice in the cyber security sector. So that brings us to the end of some of the key themes that we'll be discussing within um, SCTX. Um, so from, from, from looking at cyber, cyber insurance and and the, the advent of um, legislation like the GDPR and the Network, Network and Information Security Directive, um, as well as looking at the creation of um, the National Cyber Security Center, the work that the uh, National Cyber Crime Unit is doing within the National Crime Agency in, in going after and taking down cyber criminals, um, all the way to the cyber threat to small businesses and the cyber threat to the IoT revolution we'll be covering uh, a wide range of topics and, and, and a wide range of issues. So we hope that you can join us um, at the Cyber Threat Intelligence Zone within the Security and Counter-Terror Expo. Um, and Tech UK, once again, is very pleased to be partnering uh, with colleagues on this conference. So thank you for listening today. Um, and and I, once again, I hope you can join us on the 3rd and 4th of May at SCTX. Thank you.